AC, it's Ron. Happy 4th of July weekend. Got three days off myself this weekend, so I'm, I'm loving that. Hope some of you other people out there have got the same. And those of you who are in Europe, hope you're having a nice weekend. I know you don't celebrate our Independence Day. But uh, hey, you know, I got some things lined up. You know, um, I don't have too much in the way of uh, vinyl to show, but I've got some other things lined up I think you'll be interested in. Um, the first thing I want to get out of the way is I want to do a shout out. And I come across this guy's channel about eh, last month, I think, I think it was. And he's been in the BC about three months. And his name is Thomas, and he lives in Norway. And I believe his channel is Malcolm Nico. So, this guy is very knowledgeable. He's very low key, mild mannered, just a real nice guy. So, he's been showing, he did a, a video on Norwegian site, Swedish site, and he's right in the middle of doing some a couple of videos on the Vertigo Swirl label where he showed his collection, he pointed out uh, variant differences in the label designs, how to tell a first pressing from a second pressing. He showed some fantastic Black Sabbath on uh, Vertigo. So I watched uh, the part one last night, I think he's getting ready to do the part two. So definitely check this guy out, support him, and uh, I think you'll you'll uh, come to really like uh, Thomas. So uh, okay, now in my last video I did I did my top ten hard heavy side picks. Okay, I got a lot of feedback from that. Everybody seemed to really enjoy it, but I was kind of critical of myself on that one because I feel I dropped the ball um, when I was getting together the album uh, order to show. I kind of threw things in order, but I didn't really fine tune it too much. And when I was in the middle of the video, it just didn't feel right. That's why I kept saying everything's flexible and blah, blah, blah. Well, I went back to that original pile and I fine tune it. So I'm gonna show the albums in the order that I, uh, I should have shown them then. So, the other half. Black Cat Bones. Sir Lord Baltimore. Now, I forgot to mention this uh, in my other video. This, they, this band had a lead singer who was the drummer, and this is him right here, John Garner. I was reading about this band a few weeks ago and I found out that uh, John passed away last December. So about, it was about eight months ago. So I was saddened to hear about that. A lot of people have been dying lately. It's, I think it's just gonna get worse. Uh, it's, just, it's just the whole baby boomer uh, thing is coming in full circle. Uh, Savage Resurrection. The Stooges. SRC. Now actually that Stooges album rates higher than this one, but for me personally, I enjoy listening to this more. Uh, Randy Holden, Population 2. Blue Cheer, Vince Viseruptum. See, I was really bummed out that I got this so, so low on my original list. This has always been a favorite album of mine, and I rated, rated it way, way too low on that list. The MC5, Kick Out the Jams. Now, that's a five-star classic. Um, right now, I, I'm kind of leaning towards this album a little bit more. That's real heavy, hard, flashy album. Uh, this one's a little bit more uh, garagey, heavy, fuzz. Uh, 
So I, I'm, I'm, I'm digging this right now. But actually the MC5 rates higher. Uh, Morgan by Steve Morgan. And of course, number one, Jimi Hendrix, Are You Experienced? And this is my mono copy. Okay, that did it. I wanted to get those out of the way. I wanted to clear the air, so I did that. We've been listening to Blue Cheer, What Doesn't Kill You? And this was their, their last album from uh, 2007. Okay, the other day I went into a thrift store and I looked in the case and they had a bag of vintage cassettes and they were all bagged up. So I asked the lady if I could check them out. There was 11 cassettes in the bag for 10 bucks and they were all late 60s at circa 1970 era and uh, they were Apex, and Apex was a company that produced cassettes and eight tracks and four tracks for a lot of different record labels because they didn't make their own uh, tapes. So that's what these are, and they're good titles. And these things are rare, I mean, um, they just didn't sell like reel to reel or eight track. Cassettes are a lot harder to find. A lot of them didn't survive. They're not in the greatest of condition, but for what I paid for them, I'm in the money on them. So I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna show those. And then I got some eight tracks that I'm gonna show along with those that uh, were in my collection. So let's move on to uh, the next section of the video and check out those tapes. Let's get going with these cassettes first off. And I got Led Zeppelin 3. Okay. So that's what they look like. They all have paper labels. They all have this soft plastic clamshell case. And uh, they have the paper uh, wraparound labels. Next one is Iron Butterfly Metamorphosis. Here is uh, Credence. Moody Blues. Rolling Stones. Goodbye Cream. The Doors. The Doors. The Doors. I saw one of these sell on eBay uh, recently and it was probably in this kind of condition, you know, tears and whatever. And uh, it sold for 10, 15 bucks, uh, including the shipping. So that tells you what people are willing to pay for these things. And also got Morrison Hotel. And this one's not Apex, but it's the Beatles Let It Be. It's got a slide out tray case.
Okay, that's the cassettes. And now I've got some uh, eight tracks to show too. Let's start off with the best of cream. Now this is a four track of the best of cream. Now the difference is the hull, you can see the four tracks had a hole in the back and I believe an insert went in there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about that. Maybe not. And uh, instead of having four programs, this only had two programs. And you could not, I think the only way you could play this in an 8-track, I think if you had an 8-track player and you wanted to play this tape, I think that there was an insert that you could put in there. Um, maybe that's what it is. Um, if anybody knows, uh, please let me know. Then I got Pink Floyd Animals, and actually got three of these. Now this has got a special unique version of Pigs on the Wing. Now in the original album it had Pigs on the Wing part one at the beginning of the album and then uh, at the end of the album it had part two. So what they did with the 8 track version due to the programming design uh, so they wouldn't have to uh, cut up one of the songs. They put Pigs on the Wing Part 1 and Pigs on the Wing Part 2 bridged together with a solo instrumental track by Snowy White. So it made a very unique version of Pigs on the Wing that you can only get on the A track. Here's a Doors. Here's a blind faith. I don't know if the girl cave cover ever came out on uh, eight track or not. Here's Blue Cheer, New Improved. Uh, this is a uh, Beatles. Sergeant Pepper. It's on the Capitol, not the Apple, but I have an Apple case for it. Now this has a unique version of uh, the reprise for Sergeant Pepper. Due to the programming listing, uh, there would have been a minute of, of blank uh, silence at the end of this album so somebody at Capitol got the bright idea to extend the version of the reprise by 15 seconds to help cut down on that dead space which I think is totally ridiculous because it's a terrible edit and uh, 
you can go online and you can uh, you can actually uh, listen to the the version of it. Um, I actually found a, a a blog that had it posted, but totally bizarre for me personally. The 15 seconds extra of Dead Space, big deal. It's better than butchering the song. And this is a Neil Young Harvest Pirate, which is pretty uh, strange, unique artwork there. There was a lot of Pirate 8 tracks back in the 70s. They were sold at truck stops, flea markets, or whatever. Um, they all have unique artwork usually. And uh, they're, they're kind of interesting as just a curio. Okay, that does it for the tape showing. And now we're going to do one more thing. Okay, I'm going to show this Go newspaper. And it's out of Detroit in uh, November from 1968. Might have been a giveaway. I don't see a price on it, so it might have been some kind of a giveaway at the record stores or something. Or maybe the uh, radio station gave them out. Uh, it's an ad for W.C. Fields' album. I can get a subscription one year for ten dollars. Something about crazy world of Arthur Brown here. Tim Harden. Yeah, they had rare records in the 60s. <laughs> Dick Dodd, singer for uh, Standells. Totally cool. There's an article on Bubblegum Rock. Check this out, Add full page ad for the Beatles White Album.
Wow, what a lineup, huh? Amazing. Look, they got the SRC Morning Mood. And that's actually the B side of Black Sheep. So they were like promoting the B side. That's weird. Third power. Song about the Maharishi Yogi. Sexy Sadie. Made a fool of everyone. Oh, this is totally cool. It's a full page ad for the first Soft Machine album. Censored. He censored the nudity off of the picture. Well, here's a review of uh, graffiti on ABC. Totally cool. I'm gonna have to read that. I here's a pearls before swine balaclava. Time out for them. Oh, it says it's the album's filled with pretty awful cuts. Somebody didn't like it. Wow, there's the uh, LA Genesis. I love looking at old stuff like this, it's so cool. Top 20 albums here. Totally cool.
Oh. All right, guys, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed looking through that paper. You know, from time to time, I might be doing more of this sort of thing. I've got a lot of this type of stuff stashed away, so it's very fascinating to look at, for sure. So until next time, guys, take it easy, and see you when I see you.